So 5.8 deals with solving more quadratic equations, but we have to do this setup. So we have to be able to take a paragraph, translate it into an algebraic equation that we can actually solve. So we're literally just going to practice a whole bunch of examples in this section to get you comfortable with these kinds of problems. So the very first one, Lisa buys a kitchen island with a butcher block top as part of a remodeling project. The top of the island is a rectangle that is twice as long as it is wide and that has an area of 800 square inches. What are the dimensions of the top of the island? So I think it's helpful to draw a picture with these kind of problems, if we can. So I know that the top of the island is a rectangle. There's my rectangle. And I know that, uh, where is it? That is twice as long as it is wide. So if my width is W, what can I say about my length? It's two times the width. Twice as long as the width is my length. And the other piece that we know is that the area is 800 square inches. So when we look at the area of a rectangle, how do we get there? Area is length times width. And I know that the area is 800 square inches. So we just have to fill in the blanks for the length and the width. So let's see. 800 is my area. I'm going to drop the units and just worry about them in the end. And the length of my rectangle is 2w. My width is w. Pretty intuitive. And in the beginning, it's a good habit to get into if you're using other variables that aren't as evident. If you chose x for the width, you would have to tell me let x be the width of the rectangle. So I know what you're talking about in the end. But here it's pretty intuitive, w for width, l for length. So, as I multiply this out, start to simplify. 800 is 2w squared. So when we go to solve quadratic equations, what has to happen? Everything needs to be on one side, having it set equal to 0. And my first term needs to be positive if I can help it. So I'm going to move 800 to this side, or 2w squared this side. I want to move 800 because I want this to be positive. So if I subtract 800 from both, get 0 is 2w squared minus 800. Okay, when it's in that form, now we can start to solve. Anything common that we can take out of both of those? Factor of 2, and we'll be left with w squared minus 400. And got a binomial, two terms and a difference in the middle. So my first question should be, is it a difference of squares as we start to factor? And it is. And what are those squares? W plus and minus what value? What number times what number will give me 400? Look at that, 20. So we were able to factor, and now I've got two things being multiplied. Well, 3, but this doesn't have a factor of w, so we don't care about it. We could divide everything by 2 and get rid of it. But again, multiplying together, equaling 0. So either the first piece is 0, and if that's true, then we get w is negative 20. Or, what does that tell me? Second piece is equal to 0, which would mean it's positive 20. So when we're looking at a width, it's practical. It's an application problem. Can we ever have negative width? No. So we're going to disregard that answer. So my width for this rectangle is 20. Width is 20. And we need units on there. So I'm just talking about one dimension, the length or the width of something. And in this case, we were dealing with square inches. So, my width is going to have units, inches. And I know that the width is 20. How do I go for the length now? I know that the length is 2 times the width. So, we can plug it back in. Since the length is 2w, L is going to be, what, 2 times 20, which is 40 inches. 
So the countertop or the butcher top. The top has dimensions. 40 inches by 20 inches. And if you weren't so sure about your answer, what could you do? How could you check? Okay, we can plug it in. Make sure that my length really is two times my width. Yes. And if we go in and multiply 40 times 20, do we really get 800 square inches out? Yes. Okay, we always have a check in this class. Second one, now we're dealing with the butterfly, and we're only using triangles instead of rectangles. So the graphium, the sarpedon, I don't know how to say it, butterfly, has areas of light blue on each wing. When the wings are joined, the blue areas form a triangle, giving rise to the butterfly's common name. Thank the good Lord, there's a common name. Blue triangle butterfly. Got that part down. On one butterfly, the base of the blue triangle is six centimeters longer than the height of the triangle. The area of the triangle is eight centimeters squared. We want to find the base and the height of the triangle. So we got a lot of information. In the very beginning, let's draw a picture. It's generally pretty helpful. So when the wings are together, they're touching and we get a triangle. And what information do we have? When the wings are joined, they form a triangle. The base of the blue triangle is six centimeters longer than the height. So everything is in terms of the height. So if I let my height be h of the triangle, then the base, what is its length in regards to what we have? The base of the blue triangle is six centimeters longer than the height. So my height plus another six centimeters gives me the base. And the other piece of information that we know um, deals with what? The area. So what is the area of a triangle? Area is one half base times height. And we know in this case that the area is eight centimeters squared. So eight is equal to one half base times height. And we have both the base and the height in terms of h. So we can plug those in, and we'll have an equation in one variable. So let's do that. We've got 8 is 1 half. What is my base? h plus 6. And my height, h. Base times height times 1 half gives me the area. All right, so there's lots of different ways that we can handle this. But I don't want to distribute in one half to each of these and deal with writing fractions over and over again. So if I want to move him to the other side, what do I have to do? I'm multiplying by one half right now. So to get rid of it, we have to multiply both sides by two. When I multiply by two, multiplying by the reciprocal, I'm getting rid of it over here. And it's moving to the left-hand side. And the order of multiplication doesn't matter. Generally, we like to see smaller term come first. So let's start distributing and try to solve this. So I need my plain trinomial with no multiplication, and I need it set equal to zero. So let's distribute h in. So I'm going to get h squared plus 6h. Got rid of the product, which is good. And we need to move 16 to the other side. I want to keep this one positive, so I'm going to subtract 16, we get 8 squared plus 6h minus 16. Alright, so everything on one side equal to 0. Now we can try to factor that thing. So, I've got a trinomial with a coefficient 1 out on the front. And I need things that multiply to negative 16. Add to what value? Add to positive 6. So what combo will get us there? As we try some factors, 1 and 16 are too big. We're not going to get close to 6. 2 and 8. Some combo will get us to 6. We need it to multiply to be negative and to be positive. So what does that tell us? Which term needs to be negative? The smaller one, the bigger one needs to be positive. Order doesn't matter. 
We can always FOIL and check. If we add 8 and negative 2, we get 6. If we multiply them, we're looking at negative 16. So when two things are being multiplied together and it's equal to 0, either the first chunk is equal to 0, which tells me my height is 2, or what's my other option? h plus 8 is equal to 0, which would give me negative 8. So generally with these kinds of problems, we're going to rule out one of the answers because we don't want to have negative height. That's all. So the height of my triangle, height is 2, what are my units here? Looking back, centimeters. And how do we go for the base? And the base is what? Six centimeters longer than the height it is six plus two, which is eight centimeters. Height is two centimeters and the base is eight. So it's a really big wingspan, short body, which makes sense for a butterfly. All right. And again, how can we check if you're not confident? Plug in these into our equation, make sure we get out the correct area, and make sure that that relationship holds true between them. So the next one is for you to try. We're dealing with triangles again. The triangular mainsail on Stacy's sailboat has an area of 125 square feet. The height of the sail is 15 feet more than the base. Find the height and the base of the sail. So I want to draw a picture that's always helpful for me. So my little sail on my sailboat. Whoop. We'll put Stacy down there. Give her a skirt so you know she's a girl. <laughs> and what about these relationships? So I know the height of the sail is 15 feet more than the base. So everything is in terms of the base. I'm going to let the base be B. So my height, in terms of that guy, what are we looking at? Height of the sail is 15 feet more than the base. So my base plus another 15 feet will give me the height of that sail. All right, other piece that we have, the area is 125 square feet. How do we get the area of a triangle? One half base times height. And in this instance, I know that the area is 125 square feet. And we have our height and our base in terms of B. We can plug those in and start to solve. So I've got 125 is 1 half. What was my base? B times my height, B plus 15. And again, I don't want to distribute a half in. It has to deal with fractions. So how can we get rid of it? Multiplying by the reciprocal on both sides. We'll be gone on the left, and we're looking at 250. And I've got B times B plus 15 left. Okay. We need a plain trinomial with a positive first term set equal to 0. So as we distribute, looking at 250 is B squared plus 15B. And I want to move 250 to this side. Not the reverse, because I need that term to be positive. So I've got 0 is b squared plus 15b minus 250. So we need a combination that multiplies to negative 250, adds to positive 15. And I know that there's a 1 out on the front of this b squared value. So it's going to be a b and a b. And what numbers do we need? Multiplying to 250 adding to 15. Pretty straightforward. We need 10 and 25. Pretty intuitive anyway. And we need the bigger one to be positive so that when we add it, we get a positive middle term. Two things being multiplied equal to zero. Either the first one is equal to zero, which will give us 10, or the second one is equal to zero, which is negative 25. We don't want a negative length for our sail. So our correct answer, the base, is 10. And in this case, what are our units? Feet. So the base is 10 feet. And the height is how tall? 
15 feet longer than the base. The height is 10 plus 15, which gives us 25 feet. You can always plug it in and double check. So we've dealt with this polynomial before in the next example. We saw it a little bit earlier in the class, but we're going to revisit it in a different light. So in a sports league of X teams, in which each team plays every other team twice, we don't care about that. That's just the qualifications to use that polynomial. The total number N of games to be played is given by X squared minus X equal to N. We've seen that before. Maggie's Volleyball League plays a total of 240 games, and each team plays every other team twice. It qualifies to use this. How many teams are in the league? So what piece of our polynomial do we have information for? Plays a total of 240 games. And I have the N piece, and I'm trying to solve for number of teams in the league, the X. So I know that my N 240, and we're trying to solve for x. So as we plug in the information that we know, how do we start to solve? I need everything on one side, having it equal to 0, and my x squared needs to be positive. So which side do we need to move where? The 240 to the left. So if I subtract 240 from both sides, we get here. We've got our plain trinomial equal to 0, positive x squared term. So let's factor. I know that I'm going to have an x and an x since there's a 1 out on the front. And I need to break up negative 240 into things I'm multiplying to that, adding to negative 1. So what does that tell me about these two factors? If I need to add them and get to negative 1, they're really close together. So I know that 1, 240 isn't going to work. 2 and 120 isn't going to work because they're too far apart. We need numbers that are close together. So the combo that's closest with those terms, 15 and 16. So if we multiply those, we get 240. And we need them to add to give us negative 1. So which chunk needs to be positive? Which chunk needs to be negative? The larger one needs to be negative. The smaller one, positive. Order doesn't matter. For plugging these in, could flip them around. Means the same. And now I've got a product equaling zero. Either the first piece is equal to zero. We get 16 out. Or x plus 15 is equal to zero, the second piece, which will give me a negative 15. And thinking back to the problem, what does x represent? Excuse me. Number of teams. So it wouldn't make sense to have a negative number of teams in the league. So our correct answer in this case, 16. I know that there are 16 teams in the league. League way. Such a funny word to spell. All right, and we can always check. If we plug it back in, if I plug 16 for x, do I really get out? 240 for n. We always have a check in this class. All right. Next one. A little bit different, but the setup is still the same. The product of the page numbers on two facing pages of a book is 506. You want to find the page numbers. The product of the page numbers on two facing pages. So the product in the very beginning tells me I'm dealing with what? Multiplication. But we'll deal with that in a minute. What does it mean when we say that two numbers are facing each other in the pages of a book? So if I've got, this is my page number 53, right next to it is 54. Okay, they're consecutive, going back to that term. So if I let x be my first page, it has to be arbitrary because we don't know what the first page is. Let x be the first page. How can I represent the second page? Second page in terms of the first. 
So if my first page is 53, second one is 54, how do we get there? Add in one, it's right next door. So x plus one is going to represent our second page, and they're arbitrary, which is good. So we need the product of those page numbers to be 506. So when I'm multiplying the first page and the second one, I get out 506. The product of the page numbers on two facing pages of a book is 506. Find the page numbers. So what do we want to do? We need to distribute first. So we'll get x squared plus x is 506. And I need everything on one side set equal to 0. Which chunk do we want to move? The left side to the right or the right side to the left? We want to move 506 to the left since x squared is already positive. Hard part is done. So we subtract 506 equal to 0. So we need to look at breaking up negative 506 into things, multiplying here, adding to positive 1. So they're going to have to be close together, right next to each other. So what combo will get us there? 22 and 23. And which one needs to be positive? Which one needs to be negative? My larger one needs to be positive. So that when we add them together, we get out positive 1. So how do we factor? x in an x, since there's a 1 out on the front, negative 22 or positive 23. So I've got a product, two things being multiplied equal to 0. Either the first one is 0, which tells me x is 22, or the second one is 0, which means x is negative 23. So although negative 23 and negative 22 will multiply to give us 506, it doesn't really make sense. So what did we let x be? They're page numbers. We don't have negative pages in a book, so that one's out. Even though it does satisfy the equation, but our correct answer here, the first page, is 22, which means the second page is what? Consecutive, right next door, 23. So the pages are, pages are 22 and 23. You can always plug them back in and check.